Hey, it's good to see you all again. Um, I know it's been a little while since we've done one of these devotionals. I've actually wanted to do a devotional outside, but uh, for our friends who live in Michigan, you know that the weather has just been crazy. It has not cooperated with us. We have had snow, we have had hail, we've had wind, and now it's finally a calm morning out here. And so we're, we're glad to be able to do a video outside. You know, one of the things that I've been thinking about and, and, and seeing in lots of posts is just this idea that there's a lot of folks out there right now who are worried. Worry seems to be a, a big part of, of our experience right now. People are worried about their health. Uh, people are very worried about their finances. Uh, people are worried about not being able to see those that they love and being separated from those that they love. And, and those worries can be overwhelming. And, and for those of you who are experiencing the loss of income right now, for those of you who are in that deep place of worry, I just want you to know uh, I, I, I feel for you and I am so sorry and I, and I wish there was more that we could do to help alleviate that worry. Um, but I also know that, that worry is one of those things that, that really, the more we do it, the less it gives us. In other words, the more we worry, uh, the less we're able to cope with those things that we are facing. And I, I think that's why when Jesus talked about worry, he, he tried to make that point to those who were experiencing worry in their everyday life. You see, for those that Jesus was speaking with, oftentimes they were in that same kind of situation. No, they weren't socially distanced from one another, but their community was fragile. They had financial concerns. They worried about would they be able to feed uh, their family. They were, they were worried about their health. Would they be able to stay healthy? So they had many of the same worries that we had. And Jesus spoke into that worry some words that, were, um, that, I, that I think were helpful. But I know also sometimes for me, they, they land just a little bit flat because essentially it's, it's not a don't worry, be happy kind of message. It's a don't worry, but trust in God. And I know sometimes that trust is a difficult thing for us to have. Jesus spoke about worry a couple different times, but one of the most profound times was right in the middle of his Sermon on the Mount. And it was in the middle of his Sermon on the Mount that he gave two examples of why we should trust in God in the midst of our worry. I'm just going to look at the first one today. And that one, uh, it starts at <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Again, in the midst of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says this, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your lifespan? You know, again, those, those words about worry are really words that Jesus is trying to say, <clears throat> find that place to trust. Because the God who is in heaven, the God who loves us, the God who created us, will take care of us, is taking care of us. And the example that he gives is the birds of the air. Look how your Father in heaven, says Jesus, feeds the birds of the air. Well, you know what? I was thinking about that this week, and I was reading that scripture, and I was sitting at my table, and I was looking out, and I was watching something behind me. That is these birds, bird feeders. This was on one of those days that we had here in Michigan that was actually nice. And the bird feeder was filled with birds. Well, a squirrel too, but mostly birds. And as I watched those birds and I read those words again, I thought to myself, you know what? I know our God in heaven feeds the birds, but so do I. And so does Melanie. We have bird feeders to help feed the birds of the air. Now, Please don't think I was getting a God complex here. And in no way was I trying to say I am as good as God because I too can feed the birds. What happened to me, what, the, the moment that I looked at that, what overwhelmed me was this idea that, you know what? I can participate in what God does in God's care of creation. 
If God is said to feed the birds of the air, if God is said to take care of the little ones such as this, I too can participate in what God does. And that idea of me being able to participate in the acts of God, me being called into this creation and being able to participate in what God does in God's care of creation gave me a sense of joy and a sense of involvement and a sense where I really began to feel, you know what, perhaps, perhaps one of the ways for us to move beyond worry is to try to find a way when we can participate in those things that we know our God in heaven does. Maybe feeding the birds. Maybe reaching out to those who are in need like the voice of God does for those who are in need. Perhaps finding a way to be with another, maybe even now being with one another on a Zoom meeting or just not a meeting, but a Zoom call or a FaceTime or anything that would bring you into someone's presence, a phone call. You know, we can participate in the ways in which God alleviates the need for worry in our creation. So perhaps that is part of our calling during this time. It is not a don't worry, be happy message. It is don't worry and trust. Trust in the God in heaven and trust in the community of faith that God has given us. Trust and find a way to participate in what God has called us to do as God's people and as God's church. Thanks so much for listening.